Hello everyone, my name is Duncan Palamordas and today we will be looking at a quick review of my new book Why Alex Beats Bobby at Poker, currently available at uh, dnbpoker.com uh, Paperback is currently $29.95 and the ebook version is $19.95 Today we will actually be looking at the ebook version, although do expect that the paperback will be largely, uh, largely similar and uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a mathematician and UCLA instructor with specialization in the mathematics of poker and game theory. I'm also an avid poker player and poker contributor with articles on places like Card Player, Poker News, Upside Poker, and, and other places. So what is this book about? The short answer, like the title indicates, is that this book is a user-friendly text as to why money flows from amateurs to professionals. Uh, by amateurs, I mean players like Bobby, who happens to be a recreational player, who plays an okay game, but mostly he plays to, to have fun. Versus Alex, who is a professional poker player, she's very sophisticated, she plays for a living, and she's also a solid long-term uh, winner. There's obviously nothing wrong with either approach. People do what they want to do, be happy with themselves, and that's perfectly okay. But really, my, my question is, what is really that Alex is doing better better than Bobby? And, and at least to me, that question is not that obvious, especially since, for example, I mean, we take a look at, let's say, the legal system uh, on many different countries, and we see that still poker is largely controversial, as evidenced by the fact that a lot of people uh, around the world cannot easily play online uh, these days. Uh, there's a lot of regulation, uh, there's a lot of concerns. People still conflate a, a game of skill like poker with, with a game of, of chance, like let's say roulette or, or other games like that. And so with that in mind, the book, the book basically focuses on some invariant fundamental principles that work regardless of play style and, and frankly, regardless of the variant itself. I mean, we will be using No Limit and Cash Games in particular as a guide so that we have something specific to, to talk about. But many of these ideas are applicable to other variants and, and other forms of the game. Um, and some topics that we will explore is, you know, like instinctive but unprofitable tendencies from inexperienced players, how one can actually identify a mistake in poker and how to quantify it. That actually is a question which is harder than it sounds because defining a mistake is very difficult when the, the results uh, cannot be uh, correlated to the actions. For example, someone can actually lose money and still make the correct play. So losing money in poker doesn't mean that once someone made a mistake and, and conversely making money in poker doesn't mean that somebody played correctly. So this is something that I'm, I'm trying to, to explore there. Also, why poker does not uh, revolve around bluffing, why bluffing is not uh, as important as, as people may think, um, and why most people out there actually do not bluff. Also, the, the great impacts of variance in, uh, in poker and how to, to account for it. Uh, that's another topic which is of huge interest to me. Like we, Generally, I think that people are not wired to deal. We are not wired to deal with probability. Probability uh, is and chance is something that we are not accustomed to. And for that reason, a lot of our instincts are wrong about a lot of things. So how we can actually account for it in some interesting workarounds. And then, of course, I mean, hopefully the goal of the book is to help people think about how they can develop their own winning strategies and be able to uh, play uh, like Alex without necessarily following her strategy to the T, but by following some general uh, ideas, they can actually form their own concrete and specialized strategy that works for them which is another big point of the book, that there's not a single one-size-fits-all strategy that works for everybody, but there are certain ideas that need to be taken into account for, that, for any strategy, any winning strategy to be formulated. So uh, why don't we take a look at uh, the table of contents and see what is going to be in the book. And uh, as you can see here, there's going to be 13 chapters. Most of these chapters, all of these chapters, actually, they do concentrate on a, on a single idea. I also did include one chapter with the basics, just in case you're a total beginner. The book is not necessarily for total beginners, but also total beginners can actually uh, read the book and, and understand everything from cover to cover. And um, there are topics like, you know, the amateur, the nerd, and the gambler. This is, for example, chapter two. I'm talking about chapter two. So this is a chapter about 
the the difference between uh, amateurs uh, also players which I lovely call the, the nerds, um, I don't mean that in a derogatory way, but people who actually employ scientific methods, but only scientific methods. And then the gambler, who's actually someone who understands both the perspective of the amateur and of the scientist. So they actually employ both, um, both uh, you know, physical tells, uh, math, and also intuition. So, uh, and, and that's, for example, what the chapter two is all about. Then we have chapters like uh, chapter three, which is the poker trifecta, the three big important things uh, in poker, namely initiative position and card advantage. If you are a seasoned poker player, you know exactly what that is. But even if you do not know what, what this is, this is very much analyzed here and try to dissect why it's something that works. And it's one of the innate properties of poker that, that work regardless of, of who's employing them. This is kind of similar to for example, someone who plays chess, uh, if they have the white pieces because they go to go, they get to go first, they have an innate advantage uh, over their opponent, all else being equal. Of course, if all else are not being equal because there's a skill differential, that's not enough to give them uh, the win, but it's, it's a head start. Uh, then I, I do have a, a huge chapter on We're Only Human with all of the instinctive tendencies of beginning poker players, which are usually uh, which are usually wrong and why they're wrong. Then, like I mentioned earlier, why poker does not revolve around bluffing. Uh, poker is what I like to call an honest game. And then some principles, money saved is money earned, like the idea that, you know, saving money at the poker table in various different ways and how one can do it uh, can add up over time. Uh, then the chapter that I mentioned earlier, the, the biggest chapter of the book, the card is dead and alive, sort of. Uh, this is, um, I'm using some uh, examples actually from quantum mechanics without getting into crazy details or anything like that, but why we're not wired to deal with randomness. And, and poker has a lot of randomness uh, in it. A different form than the quantum mechanics, arguably. It's not an innate randomness. It's just that we, we don't have the actual information, but it is helpful nonetheless to think uh, as if everything is purely random in poker, and I'm making a case for that as well. Now, because I know a lot of my students and, and, and a lot of readers are actually interested in Alex's exact strategy, I, you know, I would have been amiss to, to, to not put that into the book. So that's what exactly what chapter eight is. Alex is basically full, full strategy. So exactly what she does before she sits at the table all the way to after she, she leaves the table, right? All, a lot of different things that, that she actually does. And, uh, but again, I mean, the book is not concentrated on one single person, namely Alex. It's just more general ideas. Then we have chapter nine, life is not an efficient process, which is the definition of a mistake, what a mistake uh, is. And, uh, and again, here you can see, I mean, knowing when one made a mistake is sometimes harder than correcting it. And, and in poker, that couldn't be truer, right? It's very, very difficult to know when someone made a mistake. And then we'll go over, over this. And uh, I, for those of you who, who are familiar uh, with prior work, I'm, I'm actually working on, on things that uh, people have, have done in the past. And uh, we, uh, towards the end of the, of the section, there is fundamental theorem of poker and a generalization, what I like to call the generalized fundamental theorem of poker. And as you can see, there's very limited, very limited math uh, throughout the book, right? I mean, I'm, all, I'm trying to use very simple language that everybody can understand. And, uh, next, we have the earth uh, is not flat, even if it looks that way. So these are some common misconceptions and actually some not so common misconceptions that people have about the game. You know, limping would be one example. You know, limping is actually not cheaper than raising the blinds. And, you know, I'm trying to make an elaborate case. Uh, you know, the fact that we actually do play for the blinds, so stealing the blinds is is very, very important. Uh, and and things like that, you know, close spots do not matter and people are sweating them and they, and they shouldn't. But beats are extremely essential for the game. Game, even though people think otherwise, actually every beat happens to be a bad beat and so on, like things like that, which I do think they're very, 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 very important. Now, and then finally, there is a, there's a couple of chapters, which there is a little bit of math, chapter 11 and chapter 12, um, where basically I'm trying to dissect a bet into value and, and bluff and also try to find what is the worth of each individual bet, how much it, or each individual hand, if you will, how much every hand is worth and how can we quantify it? Uh, understandably, when we're talking about things like quantification, there's going to be some math. So these chapters 11 and 12, they do 
have a little bit of math in them. But for the uninitiated or people who are not very comfortable with math, the only thing that I'm going to say is that all you need is basically some high school math and some, you know, comfort with very few multiplications and things like that. But the, the basic ideas are still uh, dissected here as well. So even though there is there is some math, that most of the math stays fairly simple, as you can see over here, things like addition and multiplication for the most part. And I'm trying to explain why. And then finally, we have the uh, chapter 13, uh, keep it simple, stupid, so to speak, uh, the, the, the well-known uh, KISS uh, principle that, and the power of fundamentals. And this is the idea that fundamentals are, are incredibly important in, in poker. So no matter how sophisticated we get, especially these days with uh, the computers and the solvers and all the, all the cool stuff which have their place, it's important to remember that uh, if we don't have our fundamentals proper, then it's going to be very, very, very difficult uh, to move forward. And that's exactly the, the idea. That's exactly what this, uh, this section is all about, about the idea of very, very fundamental ideas, like what I would like to call base, you know, like a, a strategy which is elementary, it shows up in practice, it is rather easy to describe, and when used properly, it will lead to profitability. This is what I like, a, 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 a strategy which is bedrock, ample, simple, and efficient, right? So things like that, very simple things like that, where everybody can follow and hopefully either uh, employ it to their own game, or at the very least, uh, if they want to just have fun, uh, at the very least, they know why their strategy is not going to make them any, any money. Because again, different people have uh, different goals. But those who do want to make money, they have the tools to do so. And those who want to play for fun, they also have the tools to do so, which is exactly what this dissection is all about. One last thing that I want to say before, uh, before I let you go is that I have a lot of footnotes in the book. Uh, that is mostly because of my background. I try to be very careful when I mention several things. Some of you may find those things obvious. Feel free to skip the footnotes. There are something like 330 footnotes in, 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 the, in the book uh, with references, uh, further explanations, dissection. There is a lot of nuance, which I try to leave it away from the main text. But for those of you who want to dig deeper, it's there. Like things like like this. I mean, to give you an idea. I mean, you can see what certain certain things are. Or randomly, I mean, we can go to any part of the book, and then you will see that there is there's a lot of footnotes. You don't have to read those if you're not interested. But for those of you who want to dig deeper, I wanted to put them out there. So I got out of my way to make sure that everything is referenced to the best of my abilities, of course. So hopefully, this is something that uh, that, that you will enjoy. I will leave everything all the information uh, down to the description, both the, the website and my, my Twitter account. Uh, you can find me at askthemathdr.com. That's the, my website and the Twitter is exactly uh, the same, at askthemathdr.com. So I will leave all of that information in the description. And uh, once again, the, the name of the book is Why Alex Beats Bobby at Poker. And it is available right now by d and b poker dot com for twenty nine ninety five paperback and nineteen ninety five ebook. Thank you very much for taking the time, and I'll see you in the next one.